Hey guys, Marco here. Hopefully you're all doing well. Today's video is a sad video, ladies and gentlemen, because today we officially closed the chapter of my life that was the short film that I made anywhere but here. I released a video talking about the pre-production behind the film, then I released the short film, then I put out a behind the scenes on how I shot the short film, and today we look at the final product, how I edit it, and why I edit it the way I did. It's a bittersweet moment, it really is. <laughs> but let's get into it. I think the best way to start off with this is to just show you the timeline for the movie. <laughs> like, look how full this thing is. All of our video clips and then all of our audio down here. Like, look how much audio and sound effects and music there are. And although it does look a little daunting like that, it's a lot easier to navigate because it's color-coded, because it's organized. So with that being shown, let's jump into the final product and I'll kind of break down scene by scene how I edited it. So I got the short loaded up right here. Don't you love the file name? <laughs> We're gonna watch it together and I'm gonna kind of break down my thought process while editing it. All right, so starting off the film here, we start in our positive dreamland. Our protagonist, Andre, is trying to escape from his really shitty life by escaping to beautiful places like this. And I really wanted to capture that like dreamlike feel, which is why I guess I kind of shot and edited it in more like a dreamy like state. And pretty much what I mean by that is that we get clip continuity of Andre picking up a rock and then throwing it and so on on but we also get kind of that like montage editing so you'll see him skipping the rock then we jump to waves then we jump back to him throwing and catching the rock my goal there was to show all the positive attributes that this you know environment gives him it's not just him skipping the rock it's it's the sound of the waves it's the fact that he's throwing the rock it's it's the calmness that this area brings him and that montage editing kind of dreamlike editing is then contrasted when we cut right into uh, the TV scene. This effect too right here of like the glitch going in and out was perfect. I really took my time scouring through the internet to find those glitch effects that I felt like fit the theme of this movie. If you want to see a real in-depth tutorial on how I did that edit, let me know. But I just love that sudden turn of events, like that jump cut more or less from beautiful scenic straight to, you know, a glitched out screen. I think it really helped with the overall atmosphere of the movie. Now this scene coming up, to me, is arguably the most important scene in the movie. You can tell by the stark contrast that this is a very slow paced, very long take, but I feel like it works so well because we start off with that dreamlike scenario and then we're thrown into the harsh reality of it. It's that visual contrast between kind of the montage dream editing and the long takes. Again, that visual storytelling just adds so many layers to, to the, the themes we're trying to portray and I think Andre's character as a whole. But I think it works so well because you want to bring that audience on a roller coaster of emotions. If the action never stops, then there's no point where the audience can kind of breathe and soak in everything that's happening. This scene not only allows that, but gives us the information about our main character. We see all the tapes showing that he's been doing this for a long time. It's kind of an addiction, the escapism that he's trying to achieve. So yeah, in such a short 20 second scene, I think it covers a lot of the information that we need to know about our movie. And from there we go straight into this reaction shot. I love that glistening on the TV there, that kind of like static on his face. He's looking at the gun deciding whether or not he wants to use it and everything you know but he ultimately decides to go back into the dream world because he feels like it's a little better even though it's all fake <laughs> so now this little transition right here coming up took a while to get right but i'm so glad i did it the way i did it's that clip that's playing on the tv right there that is the exact same clip that we are eventually cutting to which meant i had to plan and organize shots in a certain way because evidently i needed to shoot this before i shot this scene because i needed this clip on the tv it's that little extra bit that i think elevates the whole thing Again, I've talked praises about this shot so many times. I love it. I think the leaves work really well. And we go straight into our another dream scene, which again is kind of cut in a montage -y kind of way to show it's positive to start off when eventually it doesn't. <laughs> So with this little bit here, the static kind of like cutting out of the music, I think is a perfect time to talk about the sound editing and like sound design of this movie. I don't think I ever worked harder sound design wise than I did on this. <laughs> it took a while, but I wanted to find that right sound and noise that really resonated with the theme of itself. Cause there's a lot of static noise that you can get, but a lot of it's like either too goofy or it's a little more fun. I wanted something that sounded disturbing and desperate. And I often found that by layering audio tracks. I love this little bit here too, where he sees the gun 
I'm a big fan of transitions going from scene to scene, and this is a great example of visual storytelling, visual edits, and kind of like a jump cut put together. You see a pistol in the glove department, and then you cut straight to smash cut, more or less, to Andre with the actual gun. This scene right here, where Andre sees the dead body on the road, can mean a lot of things, maybe to a lot of different people. To me, it was always kind of a symbolism that if Andre keeps going through these addictions, keeps trying to escape from his horrible reality that's going to eventually lead to a pretty bad end <laughs> in this case death where he sees himself in johnny's shoes and eventually changes costumes because he sees himself fully and that kind of transitions us to our next scene as i said in my how i shot the movie or like making a short film video it's around this scene where i learned that you know longer takes really letting your actors get into role gives you a lot of room as an editor because a lot of filmmaking and editing is really one shot to reaction shot and how that reaction affects our character in the environment. So the more you let your actors play, the more room you have as an editor to really cut in on those exact moments where the reaction is the best. And again, me being the visual transition guy that I is, the glass is overflowing, cut to Andre popping out of the pool as he's overflowing in the bathtub. Woo! <laughs> this one -er shot here we talked a lot about in my shooting or making of video. And I had said I had taken so many takes and I, I, I cut out a lot and I threw a lot of clips in the garbage and that was just mainly the timing. Whichever ones felt better pacing wise, those are the ones I kept. And this evidently I felt was the best in terms of framing and in terms of pacing. I love this little edit here too because you see him looking in the mirror and then you get a shot here of him on a TV screen to symbolize him watching himself in these dreams and then it glitches back into reality right after this and it's just ugh. originally i had it so it was just kind of like his reaction in the mirror and then it jumps pretty much straight to him kind of gasping back but it felt a little disjointed not as cohesive as i would have liked so by reshooting certain parts this scene like andre on the tv here was a reshoot i did while editing really helped stitch that little transition together and then we get to arguably my favorite scene in the movie like the climactic finale which he gets to his his real world he thinks he's out he thinks he beat the addiction he's glad that he got out to then reveal the bloody nose and to show us that he's not out of the cycle his addiction has consumed him and that's where we get the big bum bum and the music kicks in everything's going at this point i think that's where i'm going to take a minute to really reflect on the music of the movie music to me is one of the most important things in filmmaking so i really wanted to nail that eerie disturbing vibe so when i found the music for the finale i found this guy called luke antensio but one of the songs i found for the finale came from this album exhibit and to find other music from other composers that meshed with his work it was it was almost impossible but by listening to the rest of the album i realized i can just pretty much use all the songs from this album to compose my movie because they all fit the same theme and they had that continuity of being from the same composer so a clever thing that i did was every negative thing in the movie or negative dream I used music from Luke's album and the two positive outlooks on dreams the opening at the waterfront and when Andre is first driving the car I used music from completely different composers a completely different style to really contrast that horrid cinematic feel so yeah I never met this Luke guy before I just got his music off of music bed but I will give you a giant thank you because you composed most of my movie and you did it pretty damn well <laughs> so hats off to you sir <laughs> that music just works so well in this ending scene and then I keep cutting Cutting back to the screen here, showing the static, showing Andre's getting deeper and deeper into this. And then we cut to probably my favorite shot in the movie. Again, going back to that long take and really letting Andre act it out. Look at that. Look at that acting. You can just tell this guy has lost everything. He's about to lose everything. Now, when I originally thought of the idea for the movie, this shot right here was pretty much like the shot for me. I knew I wanted like the head falling down or like a silhouette here with the TV in the background. It just looks super cinematic and it gives us a lot of layers as well to work with. And then again, cutting right back to the static, we're further in, Andre's further in. It consumed him movie's over. And I think this is my first short film, like proper short film, that I didn't put any bloopers in the credits. I just didn't feel like it worked with the theme. It was a very serious movie and to just cut automatically the bloopers didn't make sense to me. Plus I knew I was making that behind the scenes like shooting of movies so I thought I'll just put them in there. So that's the final product. That's how I approached it for editing. Editing is a weird thing to show and to teach because it's very much 
you've got to do it in order to learn. It's hard to teach someone pacing and scene structure. You really got to know what your end goal is and what the best method is to achieve that. And a lot of the time you just find that out through trial and error. I can't tell you the amount of times I edited a scene and then came back two or three days later with fresh eyes and completely changed it all. Editing is such a weird thing. It's such a underlooked part of filmmaking, but in reality, without editing you don't have a movie you just have footage so practice it learn it and get good at it because it's pretty damn important but that's that the book that is filming and making anywhere but here is officially closed next video we are moving on to new topics new horizons i got big plans coming up big plans people but here's hoping that you did enjoy the journey while it lasted if you did let me know by hitting that subscribe button so you can see more content like this follow me on all my socials they'll be down in the description and until next time i'm marco Pereira. Ciao for now.